Uh, he's the GM of the DuPage Jones, the, uh, the <coughs> Prospect League, uh, the College Wood Bash Summer League. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Um, just a forewarning, I'm super informal, so if you guys have any questions, just shout them out at me. Um, what I kind of did for you guys today is I just kind of went through and took our sponsorship deck that we have. So every time we go into a sponsorship meeting, you know, asking people for money to support us, you know, get out to a banner, do PA reads, whatever it may be, we go in with this deck. So I kind of just brought it here because, I mean, it, it shows who we are, tells what we're, we're all about, and then gives you a little bit history about us. So you guys may not know, it was our first season. We play over at Benedictine University. Um, we are in the Prospect League, which is one of over 50 college summer leagues throughout the country. Um, you guys may have heard of you know, the Cape Cod League out on the East Coast, Northwoods up in uh, uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. And uh, it's, kind of, it's the same basis. So the rankings, we're actually ranked number third. Um, Number three, when, uh, when we look at the number of prospects we send into the major league draft and just where we are ranked. So it goes Cape Cod, Northwoods, and then Prospect League. So our league, as I said, Prospect League, we have 12 teams spanning all the way from Missouri out to Pennsylvania and West Virginia here. Um, thankfully, we're not in Pennsylvania and West Virginia, so those are kind of the outliers. As you can see, most of the teams are located in uh, Illinois, Indiana. We have a total of 60 games. Um, it's 60 games through 70 days. So the guys are always on the road, they're always moving. Thankfully, I don't have to travel with the team because I remember one day they did, they had to go down to Chillicothe and then they went over to Terre Haute, up to Lafayette, and then Kokomo, and then came home. And it was like a five day road trip where, you know, we try to mimic minor leagues as much as possible just to get them used to that because, you know, for a lot of these kids, they're one year out from playing in the minor leagues, a like Kane County or, uh, or something like that. So we try to mimic that as much as possible. It's really a developmental league for them to get that experience, see different competition in their off season. Um, and a big one is to play with the wood bat. Because you know, in college, they're still playing with aluminum. Um, and then once they would get drafted in the minors, and as they work through the system, they're playing with the wood bat. So it's really a developmental league for the kids just to see that see the different competition in a different part of the country. Um, we have kids all the way down from, or up from Florida, Michigan, Missouri, um, all over the country really that come here just because of the level of baseball and uh, just uh, the, the talent that we have. And all their, all their coaches want them to play in, uh, in these summer leagues. It's actually a stipulation for a lot of D1 programs that they play in the summer. Um, just to, you know, as opposed to taking the summer off and doing nothing, uh, getting a job, doing individual workouts, their coaches want them to stay, you know, get that, uh, get that game experience. Um, as a league, we're nationally sponsored by Adidas, so that's pretty cool, um, just to put a national brand on us. Um, front office, Josh Schaub, that is uh, the team owner. He actually used to own part of the Joliet Slammers. He's an associate scout for the Milwaukee Brewers. He's a lawyer by trade. Uh, has a law firm up in Minneapolis, graduated from University of Wisconsin Lacrosse, and uh, he was a professor at, uh, where was it, somewhere up in Minneapolis for a while as well. So he's been in baseball for 10 or 11 years, so he kind of knows what he's doing. He's been a, a great mentor for me so far. Then Dudley Byler, he's our vice president. He's actually based out of Chicago. He, uh, you guys know the show Shark Tank, where they go in with their ideas he's actually had a couple of ideas i guess picked up by some of the sharks so he's, a, he's an investor really um he loves technology baseball and small business and that's really why he got involved just because this is kind of a a culmination of all three of those yeah i was just wondering about if you have any problem getting bats getting bats we actually have so the league made a deal with titan bats uh titan bat company they uh we made some sort of deal with them they got us if we bought 40 of their bats, they would give us a rebate check, something like that. So that was a league-wide thing. And then aside from that, we can get our own bats as well. So we got uh, BWP. That's what our players really prefer. And then going into next season, we're looking for more local bat providers. Um, so I've been looking up, that's kind of actually what I was doing last week, ironically, was just looking up who makes bats in the Illinois area. Yeah. Maybe look at Digger? Yes, that was actually one that came up. Um, where are they out of? Uh, Southern. Yeah, Southern, and then there's one, there's another one that's closer to that I was looking at, but you know, because we really want to be a part of the community. We want to support this area. We don't want to, you know, be shipping in our bats from 
wherever it may be, Florida, California. So that's uh, one of the big things we're looking forward to next year is just getting a more localized back deal. So there, there have been some dire predictions about the future availability of cash. Mm -hmm. uh, are those the kind of bats you usually get you, or do you get maple? We get maple, mostly maple. Yep, those are the ones that the guys prefer. Um, actually, they were, we flew through those, to be honest. We tried to put a halt on them, but they were breaking them left and right. So, but yeah, maple is what most of the guys prefer, and that's kind of, that's what we went through this season. So, um, then I, Evan Gersnowdy, I'm the general manager. I, uh, I went to the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities, majored in sport management, uh, worked for the St. Saint Paul Saints. You guys may know them. Um, just kind of their crazy in-game antics and all that stuff. We try to replicate that a little bit, and obviously not on that level because we're not can't build a brand new stadium in the middle of St. Paul um, and draw that many fans. But you know, we try to make that experience. We want to make it fun for everybody. Um, and then I also work for the Minnesota Twins when uh, the All-Star Game was up in Minneapolis. So that was a, a very cool experience to be a part of that. I was actually in left field during the home run derby. So. That was a pretty neat experience. Then my assistant general manager, Aaron Graff, he actually went, to, he just graduated from uh, Southern Illinois uh, with a major in journalism, actually. So he takes care of a lot of our social media stuff, does the, the Twitter and the Facebook, and I'll get into that a little bit more. And then uh, Jerry Cassiope, he's a local lawyer here in uh, the Naperville, Lyle area. He's our director of community relations. We just use him because, you know, None of us are from this area. Um, I, like I said, I moved down here from Minneapolis, so not knowing anybody, it was nice to have somebody who's very ingratiated with the community and could get us those higher level meetings, you know, like I said, for the sponsorships that we may not have gotten just any Joe Schmo off the street. So he's been a, a good help just meeting people and networking and all that. So, like I said, I kind of went over all this. Josh, um, been in baseball for 11 years. Dudley, just talked about him and myself. And so what we want to do as a, uh, as a company, sorry, this is a little goofy here, um, but our purpose, we want to be just a positive community member for the Lyle and Naperville areas. Um, as we were talking, some of you guys may know that there were the Dragons here for uh, five or six years, and then after them it was the Hounds, and then there was a year off, and now it's us. So we want to be just a part of the community. We want people to know that, hey, we're the drones. We're not the hounds or we're not the dragons. We do things differently. We're a different ownership, different management. So one of the things that we've really been doing is just going out um, and being part of the, uh, the Chambers of Commerce. So the Lyle and Naperville Chambers have been our big ones. Just going to any networking events we possibly can, just trying to get our name out there, getting awareness of that, hey, there's baseball back at Benedictine University. It's great showcasing Great college baseball. Um, we have, it was 75% of our players were D1 kids. Um, Alabama, you know, U of I, Northwestern, Eastern Michigan. And uh, so it's, it's, it's really a good, it's a good brand of baseball that we have. We actually had Nova Southeastern. They won the Division II National Championship. We had two of their kids on our roster as well. So it's, uh, it's good baseball, it's fun baseball, it's a good, uh, it's just a good family outing. Um, it's affordable. Tickets are $750. We're kind of working on that. We, like I said, it's our first year, so it was a huge learning year. Um, we had going into it, we had general admission tickets for $750, and then we had a home plate reserve club, which is just a section right behind home plate, and we sold that for $10. And it it was tough to, hey, how are we going to stop the general admission people from going to sit right behind home plate? It was tough just to do that because, admittedly, we didn't have enough fans there to, we wanted people to sit behind home plate. We wanted it to look full. So just chopping that going into next year, we're just going to do everything general admission, just one. And once we, once we reach those per caps that we want to have with our attendance, then we'll be able to differentiate, hey, you can't sit here unless you have the more expensive ticket. So like I said, learning year, lots of stuff just being, being worked on. Um, cutting edge and innovative with the name the drones. Um, obviously, it's very technology based. It's cutting edge. It's what's in today, if you will. A lot of people hate the name, and a lot of people love the name. Um, so, the way we look at that is, even if you hate the name, it's still starting a conversation. It makes people stop and say, "Wait, what? There's a baseball team called the Drones. What are they doing?" So, at least you're stopping and talking about it. And you know, I'm sure everybody's heard no publicity is bad publicity. So. As long as people are talking about the drones and hearing about the drones, we're happy whether you hate the name or love the name. It's really a polarizing thing. There's no, eh, it's okay. It's either I hate it or I love it. And then um, just 
the access to these players is so much more than if you were to go to a Kane County Cougars game or a White Sox or Cubs game. You can go down on the field. You run the bases after every game. The guys are always there after the game because we feed them after every game. So they're always just hanging out. They love to sign autographs. They, uh, they love to just hang out with the kids. Like our, our field manager, Joe Lincoln from last year, he had a little uh, three-year-old. His name was Sawyer, and he was basically the team's unofficial mascot. Because everybody loved him. He was always there. They're great with kids. They love just interacting with the community. One of the things we did um, with Culver's, they were one of our biggest sponsors this year, Culver's at Downers Grove. We, uh, we had our team go in and they were running food. You know, you've been to Culver's, you know how they bring your trays out to you. Our guys went in there and did that and we raised money for uh, Special Olympics of Illinois. So it was really great just to get them out in the community. You know, everybody was wearing their drones branded stuff. They could just talk to people in the community and people were like, who are you guys? What are you doing? Obviously you're not a Culver's employee. And they could uh, they could talk to them, and it's just that's one of the things we didn't do as well as we, sh as we should have was getting our guys out in the community um, throughout the season. We did this kind of middle to late July, which was admittedly too late. So we need to do these things earlier and just get and, and more often, to be honest with you, just to get the the guys out in the community. And like I said, they have a grueling schedule: 60 games in 70 days. So it's tough to you know ask that of of them, but at the same time, they want to do it. They love doing it. So we uh, we had an off day. Mostly our league-wide off days are on Monday. So that's most of the time when we do this stuff. You know, if they have to do any rehab, that kind of thing. Um, sponsorship reach. I'm sure you guys all know how huge DuPage County is, and that's why we went with the DuPage drones as opposed to Lyle or Naperville or Downers Grove, whatever it may be, because we wanted to be able to incorporate this whole area because it's a uh, it's a proud county, I would say. You know, everybody loves, they're like, yeah, I'm from DuPage, that is what it is. So we didn't want to limit it to just Lyle, because if we say we're the Lyle drones, nobody from Naperville is going to buy into that. You know, so we wanted to be able to incorporate everybody as much as possible. We play at Benedictine, as we said, we have fireworks every uh, Friday, Saturday. Like I said, we run the bases after every game, 30 total home games. Um, and just uh, lots of different seating options. We have berms, we have bleachers, chair backs. We actually have a party deck. Um, it kind of overlooks the field, which is a great area for uh, birthday parties, little league teams celebrating the end of their season, corporate outings, all that stuff. So, um, once again, and one of our biggest things for sponsors is that it's not just the drones there. You know, that complex is in use all throughout the summer for band camps. Little League tournaments on the softball field over here. There's an ultimate Frisbee camp that brought in like 2,500 people, which is astounding. Um, so there's always people just going in and out of those gates. And if you can have your signage up there, that was huge, just those impressions. Because when you're going into sponsorship meeting, people want to know how many impressions they're going to get per dollar. So, uh, you know, over 75,000 people go through those gates every year. Um, the U.S. track and field, they hit, uh, pulled their like regional semifinals or something over there, so that was a huge one as well. So sponsors see a great return just on the uh, on the people that go through. Um, this stuff is more just for sponsorships, you know, it's like I just said, just uh, the impressions that they see throughout the season. Our season does go from the end of May to the middle of August. So a little bit about our last year. Um, it was our first year, so quite honestly, my owner called me up in uh, in April, because we were having trouble securing sponsorships. We're like, you know, once we get on the field, it's going to be great. And he called me one day, and he's like, dude, what if we suck? And he's like, what if we can't win a game? And I was like, Josh, I didn't even think about that. We're not going to think about that. We're going to kill it. We're going to be great. Um, so, and truthfully, we did. We, uh, we had a great opening season. We had the second best record in the league. Unfortunately, we didn't make the playoffs just because of the way that it's set up. So the, the league divides the season into two, um, two halves. So first half is 30 games, second half is 30 games. If you win the first half, you're automatically in the playoffs. Um, the reason that the league does this is because so many of the players are still in their conference tournaments. You know, if they make the, the College World Series, they're not going to be here for a little while. So you can sign 10 players up until you have your full roster. So the reason that they do that is they see the first half as, oh, this is going to be mostly temp players. And then the second half, that's when you have your full rosters. So unfortunately, we didn't win either half, um, but we ended up with the second best record. It's kind of annoying to me, but yeah, whatever. 
Um, the, truthfully, the, the team that won the first half in our division, it was Quincy, down from Quincy, Illinois, and uh, they won the first half by two or three games, and they tanked it the second half. They didn't care because they were already in the playoffs. You know, so they ended up going into the playoffs 12 games under 500 when we were sitting, you know, 11 games over 500. And it was, it was tough. I mean, they went in, they, they won their first, um, they won uh, the first matchup, and then they ended up going to the World Series of the Prospect League, if you will. But then they got swept there. So it's tough. I wish it was a change, but you know, a lot of a lot of leagues do it like this, and I understand why they did it. Um, we had two of our kids drafted. Um, Brandon, he actually never got to play for the drones because he was drafted right away. He never came because he was doing pro workouts for the week that his uh, his season was over. Then he was doing pro workouts for a week until the draft, and they got drafted. And uh, Chevis Hoover, he played with us for like two games, and then he was gone. So I mean, it's it's cool that a they got drafted. We can say these guys were going to be drones at some point, but uh, we would have liked to have them throughout the season. Maybe we would have made the playoffs with them. But what are you going to do? Aaron Meyer, our second baseman, he shattered the uh, prospect league average um, record that was held. By was set 2011. So he batted 423 throughout the season, which pretty insane. He beat the record by it was 35 points. So it's it was crazy what he did. After the All Star break, he just came on, and it was uh, there was a stretch where he had he went 10 for 12 with three home runs and like seven runs scored or something like that. So there was just a stretch where he was killing it. He, uh, he, named, he was named the league MVP and the Pro Prospect of the Year. And then actually on Thursday, he was named first team All-American throughout the whole country. So he was great for us. He's, all these kids are just the nicest kids you'll meet. You know, they're all, they all just, they're still loving the game. That's why they're still playing. They're not doing it for the money. They obviously want to get noticed and, and get seen, but at the same time, they're still running every, every hit out, even if they know they're going to get thrown out. They're still running out to first base as hard as they can. What school is he at? Uh, he's at Missouri State. Yep. So uh, look out for him. He might. He's uh, uh, Mark Berger. He's a uh, third baseman. He also goes there. Um, so two huge names coming out of, uh, of Missouri State. That's also where our, our field manager was from, Joe Lincoln. Um, we finished with three postseason All Stars: Aaron Meyer, uh, Sean Fransack. He's actually a local kid. He lives in Naperville. He went to Montini High School. He was our closer. Um, he pitched in, I want to say it was like 22 games, finished with 11 saves and a sub-1 ERA. Um, and then Jake Anchia, he was our catcher. He was actually from uh, Nova Southeastern. He was uh, named the first team All-Star as well. And then we had uh, the lowest team ERA in the Prospect League at uh, 3.2. And then we also finished second in batting average at like 286 or something like that. So overall, it was a very successful season. We wish we would have... Made the playoffs, but what are you going to do? Can't ask for too much more than, than that in a, in a first season. So ticket opportunities, like I said, our group outings. We have the uh, we have great group rates. Like I said, our, our general admission is 750, and then we have group rates. You know, if you bring 15 people, if it's knocked down to 650, it's like you can get it all the way down to three dollars a ticket. So it's really affordable. Um, one of our great things is our nonprofit um, opportunities that we have. So we partner up with these nonprofits. They don't pay us a dime. They go out, they more. Um, little league teams, that's another thing we admittedly didn't do as well as we should have. Um, you know, everybody calls it the field of dreams where the guys get to run out onto the field with, uh, with the team and stand with them for the national anthem, shake fly balls, ring batting practice. So that's something we need to capitalize on a little bit more going forward as well, just getting the, the little leagues more involved. Because like I said, at Benedictine, there's always Literally tournaments going on in that softball field right next to us. So it was great for us for from an exposure standpoint. People are coming over after their games and they're just watching, they're like, what's going on here? So, you know, it, it was tough from a, a ticketing standpoint because they would just go to the uh, the little league game for free and then they'd come over and watch the rest of our game. So kind of hurt our ticket integrity a little bit, but at the same time for exposure purposes. We figured it kind of evened out. It was a wash, um, but it was uh, something we need to capitalize on and work next year. How can we split the two up and just so people know that, hey, this is a, a, a youth tournament that you don't have to pay for, but we are a ticketed event. So that's something we have to work on going going forward for next year, just to protect our, our ticket integrity, because that's huge. Nobody's going to 
pay the seven bucks, so they can just be like, hey, I'm going to the, the Little League game and then hop right on over for us. Um, audience, we just have, you know, everybody around. This is a baseball rich area, which I didn't know how rich Naperville, Lyle, I didn't know how huge the, the Little Leagues were down here until I got here. Um, there's, they're all over the place. Everybody I hear, they're like, yeah, we're in travel ball. Yeah, our kids just starting. So everybody loves baseball in this area. So that's why, uh, it's one of the big reasons we came down here is just because there's so many opportunities to get people out of games. Um, here's just some of our demographics. Um, this is all from Facebook. Th these two are from Facebook. Um, social media has been huge for us. That's one of our biggest things. Um, this is just a breakdown of who likes our page. We have 700 some, no, 600 some likes on Facebook. Um, and it's just interesting how you can break it down, um, you know, the age group, where they're from. We have people like us from, like you said, Japan, and just like all over the place. So it's really interesting just to see where your fans come from, what demographics you're reaching, and uh, what they really want to see. Here's our, just our stats. Um, this is huge for sponsors, like I said, because they want to see the impressions. Um, so Facebook, 723 likes. We have up to 20,000 20, impressions in any given week throughout the season. So that means that 20,000 people are seeing whatever we post. You know, So if we post something thanks to one of our sponsors, up to 20,000 people can see that a week, which is huge. Um, Twitter, same thing. We have two Twitter handles, which is odd. Don't get me started on that, because that's a whole other presentation. Um, but we have, between the two, we have about 1,800 followers. Um, we're working to get all on one. So we had a name the team contest when we first announced this, and that's where the Lyle baseball handle comes from. So before we even had a team name, we had 900 or so followers, because we did a name the team contest, and then fans got to pick the logo and all that stuff. And then once we decided on the team name, that's when we started Drones Baseball. So the challenge has been how do we get people who were following Lyle Baseball to transfer over to the Drones Baseball. The Lyle Baseball has been just to cast a huge net. You know, we have, I don't know if you guys have heard of Hootsuite, but it's uh, something where you go into Twitter and you can put in keywords. For example, we have keywords for Cubs, White Sox, Naperville, and Lyle. So every time something gets posted on that, it automatically posts for us. So it's really, Lyle Baseball has just been something for sports fans to follow. And then the Drones Baseball is where you see updates about our team. You know, whether uh, it's in-game updates, whatever it may be when we do, uh, um, when we have a new article posted, anything like that. Um, then our website, Drones Baseball, we have about 1,500 hits throughout the week um, and over 3,000 page views. So that's huge for us, but uh, the one thing we ran into, which is, this is crazy. So if you think about it, we had 3,000 people visit our website a week, and we had less than 1% buy a ticket off of our website. So we had all these people, and so the page views, that's landing on our home page. Of that, about 2,000 ended up on our ticketing page, but less than 1% bought tickets. So we're trying to figure out why is nobody buying a ticket. Um, we use this ticketing system called Glitner, as does everybody in our league. Um, it's pretty, it's easy to use, but the, problem, the drawback is every time you go to buy a ticket, they try to make you register and create an account, which nobody wants to do. Nobody wants to spend the time sitting there, putting in their address, putting in their credit card number, because nobody wants that kept on file. So that's one of the things we, uh, we ran into, and we're exploring new ticketing systems that don't make you you know, create an account because people just want to go in there, print their tickets at home, put in their credit card number, and done. Um, so that's one of the big things we're doing for next season is uh, how can we actually convert the people who go to our website into ticket buyers and, uh, and fans at our game. Weekly newsletter, this has actually been huge for us. Um, we started at zero, obviously. We're up to 635 people on our newsletter. This is anybody from businesses to people who uh, are on our website and say, hey, I want to be updated with the latest drones news. Um, and the open rate is actually about 30%, which is huge in this industry. Um, working for the Twins, they had less than 4% open rate for, uh, for their newsletter. And as you can see, the industry average is about 7.2%. So being at 30%, we're really happy with that. Hopefully we can keep that up, but at the same time, it's due to dwindle at some point. Um, and then this, these are just like, um, examples of what we would do for our sponsors um, and that you can see the reach that these these have um, 
Energy Bar, Culver's, Window Works, Alpha Graphics, just all of our different sponsors. We always shout them out on Facebook, Twitter, whatever it may be, just to A, show them those impressions, and uh, B, just give them some love on, uh, on, a, different, on a different scale. So these, these are our R numbers. I told you before that 75,000 people go through the gates of Benedictine throughout a summer. These are our numbers. Anticipated season attendance is about 18,000 going into next year, which is a, a pretty good number. Admittedly, we didn't hit our attendance goals last year at all. But uh, How many dates is that? How many dates? 30. So we have 30 home dates. Um, 600. Yeah, about 600-ish. Um, social media, like I said, we have uh, over 25,000 then advertisements. We do radio, newspaper, um, you know, mailers that are hung on, on your doorknobs or stuffed in your mailboxes, whatever it may be. And like I said, learning year, we did uh, a, a newspaper advertisement in Positively Neighborville that uh, allowed people to do a, a buy one, get one free. Cost us a little bit of money, and we had one person redeem it. So it's just, it's the things. It's a learning curve. Um, the newspapers obviously didn't do much for us. We did a huge mailer with two of our sponsors where uh, the, it was actually it was this really nice, it was like a normal sheet of printer paper, except it was like cardstock, really nice, glossy, looked great. And uh, it just had our schedules, just letting people know who we were, and it was like buy a ticket and get a free hot dog or something like that, and one person redeeming on the two. So it's just the things like where do we want to spend our money because being a new startup, we don't have that much money to spend. So where do we spend it, and where can we see the most return? One of the biggest things is our outfield banners. So through doing research, the average fan looks at the outfield 300 times. Not that they're focused on it, but if they're looking at a fly ball out there, they're going to see it subconsciously. It's over 5 million impressions in one game per person. <coughs> um, so it's, like, it's, it's a huge... The impressions are huge because obviously that's what people want to see. They want to see the impressions per dollar that they spend. We have a bunch of different opportunities, outfield banners, um, scoreboard signage. We have a little uh, rolling, we don't have a nice jumbotron that's in the works, hopefully. But we have a little uh, a little scroll bar that we put all of our sponsors up there. We're selling a field naming rights, actually, this year. So it's going to be, whatever, Pepsi Field at Benedictine University. So whatever we can do, whatever you can sell, is what we want to do. You know, it's because, obviously, Cash is the lifeblood of any organization. So, and then uh, these are just all the stuff I went over before: social media, website, newsletters, all of our different uh, broadcasting and reach networks. Is uh, it's huge for us. So, I guess I think that's my last slide. Yeah, that's it. Any questions about us? The prospect league, the drones, who we are. Yeah. What name came in second? We had it was. So we narrowed it, we had over 250 different submissions, and we narrowed it down to five. The uh, second place was the, wasn't the Lumberjacks, but it was the, um, ah, I forget now. They were all woodsmen, that's what it was. They were all very uh, Morton Arboretum based, if you will. So there was like the woodsmen and uh, Trees. The, the, uh, the fighting <laughs> oaks. Arbors. Yep, the fighting arbors, that was one as well. So. There were lots of different names. Um, I kind of like, I mean, I'm st the jury's still out on the drone's name. I like it, it allows us to do some some different things, like uh, instead of the sausage races or the racing, uh, raising president's heads, we have drones flying around and racing during our games, which is pretty neat. We partnered up with the Chicago Drone Racing League and they fly at like 70 miles an hour, zipping in and out of the light posts and out on the field. So if you guys haven't seen those things, it's, it's insane. It's dangerous, I will say that, but, but it's insane. That's why we don't let our guys go out there. We're like, all right, we're doing drone racing, this, this, and this inning. Don't go out on the field until we tell you. So it's, uh, it's cool. I like it. Uh, I like the name, but as I said before, it's very polarizing. People hate it or people love it. So, yeah? How many other leagues compete like the, with the Prospect League? Like, how many others in your... So there's over 50 of these leagues throughout the, throughout the country. Yep, and we, we stick within our 12... Our 12 teams. We have two divisions. Um, looking to actually switch it up to three divisions, um, just because there are some teams in this league that are notoriously terrible. Um, Hannibal, Missouri. They're always bad. Um, so we want to kind of even it out a little bit. If we were to have three divisions instead of the two, we wouldn't have as much overlap with um, with the other divisions. For example, we played Kokomo and Lafayette a combined. 
10 times of our 60 games and that it's like interleague play, you know? So it's, it hurts us in the sense that Springfield, who beat us in the second half, they played Hannibal like 10 times in the second half and beat it, it was like eight and two, I think they went. So it's like, it hurt us in the long run that we had to do those interleague games, if you will, while they were staying in the league and beating up on the worst team in the conference. Yeah. When's your? When was the day of the season started and ended? Sure. Our uh, so our first home game was May 28th, and then our last home game was August 6th. So we we started on the road on May 26th. And will that be about the same? For the yeah, about year? the same. Yep, exactly. And uh, yeah, it always goes from late May or so until early August, and then the, the championship series <laughs> ended on August 14th. So it's just like the week after um, after the season's over that we that we do the playoffs. Yeah. I assume you've had drawings for winning a drum, right? Well, we wanted to. We worked with a lot of different <laughs> drone companies. We wanted somebody to be the official drone of the drone of the drones. But you know, it, it was tough going into our first year. Nobody knows what we were going to do. So now that we have the numbers and we were like, hey, we had a successful first season. We're coming back for year two. Hopefully, we can do that. We'd love to do a, an end of the year culmination. Be like, hey, win this drone for whoever comes and enters to win as many times as possible. So that's in the works because or even the <coughs> toy ones. Or exactly, one of the cheap ones. Yeah, yeah but it, it's cool because there's just so many regulations with the drones now. You have to have the FAA credibility and all that. And Benedictine is actually a no-fly zone, but they gave us a, a special permit that as long as we have somebody licensed, we can fly drones around. So it's been a couple hoops to jump through getting this. And, and another drawback for this <coughs> is how do you make a mascot out of this? Because people love the mascots. People love yeah. seeing that thing. And you can send it to events like Lyle Eyes to the Skies. We went to. We were giving out water bottles and little tattoos and stickers. But at the same time, we could have had a guy in a baseball suit with some drone wings flying out, that would have been a lot better. So just, just be the home. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at like the uh, the Mets baseball where you do something like that and then kind of... And somebody who can jump really high. Right, naturally, yeah. Maybe hover up there for a little while. Right, so we're, we're going to make the baseball and we're going to kind of make it our own and, and build it out hopefully. So that's one of the big things for next year too is because people want that, uh, that, that mascot walking around. What about a bee? You know, like the, uh, the worker drones? Uh, there you go. Oh, okay. I like that idea. It's smart. See, it's maybe, there's so many ideas. Maybe the mascot operates here. We were thinking about that, having somebody in like a pilot gear right, or right. something like that. But the thing with that is you can't fly the drones over people, and we can only have it during certain. So it's yeah, there's uh, yeah. it's it's tough to, to work with. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you have a million ideas, so I'll just give you a million ideas. Go for it. I, I don't um, know if it's possible or not, but we had talked about the library doing a, a program on drones. Okay. Like a year ago when they first started, people started buying yeah. them. Um, you may want to partner with the neighborhood or Lyle down to the library yep. to get your word out that way. That's a huge thing as well. But like I said, I don't know if you can actually do a program of if you could have a drone in the library. Like sure. It, like they have mediums bigger than this or right. even the size. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can fly a drone, but you can sure. have them. That exactly, you can just at least looking at right, and that's. But, and also, um, yeah. get a hold of all the schools and get some literature to them. Or exactly. send them a PDF. They all have these online backpacks, sort of thing. Right. That gets information out to the parents and the schools. With all the kids before school gets you hit on our two biggest things is a reading program that we didn't have and then getting into the schools because being our <laughs> being in our league our kids from all over the country they aren't from here so they stay with host families in the area which is a, a big thing that we came in late on too that we didn't have enough host families so we had to pay to put these kids in a hotel throughout a lot of the summer and that was very expensive so uh, you know that's that's the big things is just hitting the schools, being able to get into them, and uh, and then the reading programs, which are huge because that's a huge thing for the King County Cougars is their reading program that they give out tickets to the kids, and then the parents come, whatever it may be. So. Or how about a competition where they have to land on bases, or you know something that would sure. all parts of the ballpark. Build a drone. Build a drone. <laughs> there you go. You do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. So, I mean, like I said, the name is polarizing, but it lets us do a lot of stuff as well, opposed to being the, being the fighting art. It stands out. Exactly. It makes people think. It's very current and future. And not exactly. Like and, and that's one of the biggest things. Is like, if you think about technology based mascots throughout baseball, any sport, you can think of like the Jets and the Rockets. And that's basically it. So, you know, it's like we tried to latch on to something that's cutting edge and new and, and current to the times because 
as you can see, drones aren't going anywhere anytime soon. So hopefully neither are we. Awesome. Thank you guys.